Technology is abounding more than I could ever feel or think or imagine. The PC you just built is worthless. It's worth nothing, okay? We are getting more CPU cores on the way. I did the math. These new CPUs are gonna have more cores than my mini PC, my main rig, and my laptop all combined. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Yeah, that's right. All on a consumer desktop platform. Guys, let's talk about it. Nova Lake is leaking out. And I gotta say, this is looking like the Giga Chad we all thought this CPU architecture was gonna be. It's gonna have 52 cores on a consumer platform. Yeah, that's right. And like I said, that's more than my desktop, my uh, mini PC, and my laptop combined, okay? Maybe even with my smartphone in there, that might be more cores than that. All central to one computer, one workstation at your home. Guys, this is crazy. So this leak came from HXG or whatever his name is on Twitter. Let the world know with a mic drop that Nova Lake is gonna have an eight plus 16 configuration times two. And you may be doing the math, wait, isn't that only 48? Well, somebody else corrected him in the comments, letting him know it also is gonna have two low power E cores per uh, chip. So this is gonna be very interesting. This is exactly or similar to what I wanted them to do to scale up core architecture. Intel, they needed something like AMD where they could have a compute tile with cores that they could just add more and more and just scale up those cores. I like to see this, man. We have an eight P core. 16 e core and a two low power island e core chip right and they're stacking two of these chips on one silicon interposer giving us a total of 52 cpu cores guys <laughs> this is gonna cook man i mean i don't really i let me do the math and post on what my performance estimates for multi-core what i think this is gonna be but if i had to guess off the top of my head pff, if the Air, if Arrow Lake at 24 is getting what 45k in Cinebench R23, I wouldn't be surprised if something like this gets 70k in R23 with adequate cooling. I guys, I'm this is crazy. This is a bit insane. It could probably even if it scales perfectly. I mean, we could be getting close to 90k in R23, maybe even 100k. Break the 100k barrier on a consumer CPU, guys, 52 cores. Boys, my key shop is having a Windows 10 Pro sale. If you're building a new PC, go ahead and head over there and save some money. Use the coupon code SK55 for 55% off any Windows key order. Once you get your key, just go down to activation settings in Windows, and then just copy and paste your key into activation settings. Bada bing, bada boom, you're done. They're having all kinds of sales on not only Windows 10 Pro, so go ahead and check them out, guys. Nova Lake is looking really promising. Also, Nova Lake may have XE3 or Celestial Battle of uh, Celestial Arc graphics, so that would be really cool. Some more media engines in there. I think Nova Lake would be a creator and workstation um, PC builder's dream honestly guys now you may be thinking well what does this mean for gaming we don't need 52 cores and 52 threads for gaming and guys i gotta say i don't know if nova lake is updating the io tile and updating the memory axis the arrow lake had we all know that arrow lake underperformed in gaming and it wasn't looking too good so if this does not fix that issue it's not going to cook in gaming but guys honestly if you're not getting a 5090 class card which hey if you're getting a 52 core cpu you very well may be um, this won't really matter too much. I think based on what we're seeing from Nova Lake, it should be probably um, pretty close to AMD's top of the line at the moment. It just might not have XD, X3DB cache and it might not have, you know, the lowest latency core performance, but with 52 cores, I mean, this is not made for gaming guys. This is made for content creation, right? So yeah, Nova Lake's looking really cool. Also, we talked about this on a channel, the channel a little bit, but we have more details now on Panther Lake Panther Lake is launching later this year, and guys, I'm hyped because this is the first product on Intel 18A. This is the most advanced node in the world. It's coming out. It is actually beating, by projections, uh, TSMC 2 nanometer in performance targets. It looks like that Intel 18A is faster than TSMC 2 nanometer, but TSMC 2 nanometer is denser. So it sounds like 18A would be not only a power efficient node, but one that can maybe scale to high performance compute while TSMC 2 nanometer may be better for lower power, high density devices. That's just what I'm getting 
from that info. Let me know what you think in the comments. But yeah, so Panther Lake, it's gonna have a total of 16 cores. Now, guys, I gotta say, these low power island e-cores are kind of inflating the numbers, but they're not really made for anything other than keeping power usage down. But we have four performance cores on Panther Lake, eight efficiency cores, and I think this, these are the same efficiency cores that we got on Lunar Lake, which are really awesome, guys. And then four low power um, island cores, and we have four low power, we have four low power island cores on this bad boy. That makes a total of 16 cores or 12 real actually like useful cores on this thing. And it also is gonna have 12 XE3 cores, 12 celestial cores. So at least 50% more GPU performance than Lunar Lake, probably even more with some IPC up in there. So Panther Lake looking really good. It's only coming to laptops as far as I can tell now. I don't think it's coming to desktop anymore. Um, looking like a really good chip. Also, um, it's rumored to have 180 tops with this new NPU. I, I, who really cares, guys? I'm just gonna let you guys know I did get a Lunar Lake laptop and I'm loving it so far. I got it for $800 off Walmart. Amazing deal. Check the link in the description for that deal. They also have one, the 16 gigabyte version for 550 off Best Buy, but I think I wanted the 32 gig. I wanna try some editing on the go. So I'm really enjoying it, but guys, I gotta be real. I've been using this laptop for four or five days now, monitoring all the performance usage, and I have not seen the NPU and task manager used once. I've been trying, I did stable diffusion, I did uh, co-pilot, AI text generation, all these things, and the NPU is sitting there idle. And it's crazy to see that after I looked at the die size of Lunar Lake, or this uh, NPU took up of the die size. I mean, you could probably fit like eight more efficiency cores in the area, or maybe even like 12 more efficiency cores in the area they use for this NPU. So it's really horrible to see that because Lunar Lake could definitely use more CPU performance. Um, and I don't really think that NPU is gonna be used for anything useful anytime soon. So um, Panther Lake is gonna have 180 tops total platform tops compared to Lunar Lake's 120 platform tops. And also I think Panther Lake's GPU had like 90 or like a hundred of those tops. So the GPU is really where we're getting all the extra performance in the tops off Panther Lake. If you're on AM5, you're gonna have a great upgrade path ready, not only for gaming performance, but also for multi-core. Guys, let's talk about this. I think this is going to be one of the most exciting things AMD has done since X3D, and actually maybe even more exciting. Let's talk about it, Zen 6, okay? It may sound in your mind like, okay, Zen 5 was a nothing burger over Zen 4. Zen 6 will probably be the same deal, right? I mean, they, are they even gonna update the IO tile? And <laughs> to my, my answer to you on that is yes, they are in a big way. Okay, guys, so Zen 6 or uh, Medusa is what AMD is calling this architecture, is gonna have 12 core CCDs. Finally, we are getting a bump in core count from AMD. It's been a while, guys. It's been a while. Also, you know, uh, we haven't got a bump from Intel since Raptor Lake, so it looks like Intel decided to bump it up and AMD did too. I don't know who decided first, but it looks like we're gonna get a lot of threads and a lot of multi-core performance this next generation. So that comes to a total with two CCDs on Zen 6 to 24 performance cores or 48 threads on a desktop platform. Guys, this is gonna be real nice. I'm, I don't really know how to estimate this performance here. I think Zen 6 is going to have crazy IPC gains, and we'll talk about why I think that in one moment. So I think this will scale past the thread count increase in multi-core, and let me tell you why. So Zen 6 is going to have an updated IO tile. This, I think, will be on a new node, and it's gonna be ginormous. It's gonna be big. It's gonna have um, you know, updated, uh, memory controller, so finally we can reach higher memory clock speeds other than just 6,000 on AMD DDR, DDR5. And not only this, this is the big deal, boys. This I.O. tile sits right next to the CPU core chiplets. Everything is so compact now, everything is right next to each other. They're actually connected over a bridge silicon interconnect. That is huge. We're no longer using primitive little wires that travel huge distances to go back and forth to talk to our CPU cores on AMD. Guys, this will bring a huge, just ginormous latency reduction on AMD platforms, and it's gonna give us more bandwidth, less latency, 
and overall just more core performance. I would guess, guys, that if AMD does come out with a 3D VCAS chip on Zen 6 and it has this bridge interconnect architecture, it will be much smaller of a gain than usual, if, if anything. I think if they made X3D, if there's even a reason to make X3D on this bridge interconnect, it would only be 5% gain max. And I know that sounds crazy to think. A lot of people probably saw this leak and they're like, wow, these cores are gonna clock faster, we're gonna have more of them, and they're gonna have this bridge interconnect with low latency, so if you add X3D on top of that, that's like 40% more improvement. Guys, X3D mitigates the chiplet architecture of Zen and AMD's design. So when you remove that chiplet architecture that has been hamstringing its gaming performance since the inception of Zen, or Zen 2, I guess, um, yeah, there's not a lot more you have to improve on. And this is a great overall. Think, just think based on this, you're gonna be getting X3D performance with every Zen CPU chip. It's finally, it's gonna act in a monolithic manner with silicon interconnects. Guys, I'm excited for this. This is AMD's Zen Moment 2.0, and I'm ready. I will switch to an AMD chip on my main rig if this uh, is really, really compelling and I need the performance. I think I'm gonna stay on my 13700K for a while, but I would not be opposed to picking this up a couple years from now if the competition has kind of died down. I would definitely 100% switch to Zen, but also their iGPU and decoder performance has to be on the level of Intel's for me. I'm a video editor, so I need that. I need the quick sync, so they gotta get that in check too. But if that's in check with this updated IO tile, the bridge interconnects, daddy's happy. I'm, I'm looking forward to this, boys, and it's pretty exciting. I think this competition is like nothing we've seen before. And with AMD and Intel doing this, it makes me think like, what are they scared of? Like, what are they scared of? 52 cores, 48 cores. What are they looking forward to? And I, you may be thinking, well, you know, AMD did this just because Intel did, or Intel just did this because AMD did. And I think you're right there, but I, I can't help but think that they are scared of NVIDIA entering the CPU market, the consumer CPU market with an ARM architecture. And I think they just wanna crush anything NVIDIA has that they might release this year to consumers and these chips will definitely do it. However, you know, Zen 6 and Nova Lake, I don't know if they're gonna come out in 2025. I think they're gonna come out in the fall of 2026 or maybe in the spring, I, I'm not really sure, but I don't think these chips are launching in 2025. I hope I'm wrong, that would be epic if they did. If they do, Nova Lake definitely needs to launch on LGA 1851, not a new platform, that would be disastrous. We gotta talk about the 9070 XT. I just wanted to bring this up. I saw some leaks, this card, <laughs> is supposedly gonna cost 749, maybe even $849. No, <laughs> just no AMD. That thing will rot on shelves at that price, unless FSR is just crazy good. I know 4080s and 5080s are going for ridiculous scalper money right now, but really no one that is budget conscious is even buying those GPUs at that price. And let's be real, you're the budget brand, so you gotta, you gotta charge budget prices. 550 for the 9070 XT, 600 max or it's DOA. That's my thoughts, okay? So what did you think of Nova Lake Panther Lake Zen 6 9070 XT? I think these new CPU architectures are looking really crispy and as long as they don't consume as much power and heat up like the surface of the sun, I think we have a winner on our hands here. So guys, let me know what you think. These are just my thoughts and I'm really excited, guys. Silicon Stakes, signing out. Master of Tech. Ever review every spec he's on deck from GPUs to CPUs. He knows it all. No question too big, no detail too small. He's got the knowledge, he's got the skill. When he drops his take, the haters stand still. Fanboys can cry, but they can't deny. Silicon Stakes truth cuts through the